Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be doing something different because we're going to be doing watercolour painting and I'm going to be looking down at you like a giant again. Ho ho ho! Okay. <laughs> so, I got this book recently. Um, it's a Mark Criley. I think it's Mark Criley. Mark Riley Realism Challenge. He's got a YouTube channel and he does some really cool drawings. And uh, he's one of the first YouTube artists, I think, that I was, was watching mostly. Um, and uh, yeah, I know he used watercolours, and watercolours is what I want to try and improve. So I started looking at the way he does it, and it's actually quite similar to the way I used to draw. Uh, but instead of watercolours, I would use um, I'd use markers and then pencil grains. But anyway, <laughs> look at that. His uh, drawing of strawberries next to his um, photo of strawberries that he's got right next to it. <laughs> I was like, wow, that looks amazing. And there's quite a lot in there. It's, it's a good book. Um, you wanted to get it and you can go through like the steps and what he uses um so the reason i got it yeah is i wanted to get into using watercolors and i thought um doing a bit of realism might help me improve my watercolors and i thought why not do a video while i'm doing it <laughs> while i'm practicing and uh i'm using the same paper as he uses. I've tried loads of different watercolour papers and I've always found it annoying uh, that, the, that it's kind of a cockley uh, paper where this one that he uses is uh, smooth. It's, I'll hold it like that. Strathmore Bristol smooth surface. Oh yeah, smooth surface. That's what I want. I want the smooth surface. I want to relax <laughs> and be smooth. Oh yeah. Um, okay, getting a little bit insane. <laughs> so we've got the paints, the uh, the Cotman watercolor paints, Cotman watercolor paints, and good price. I've, they're the student range. And then got two grapes. I put them here. I'm not eating them yet. Uh, they're very dangerous being there because I like grapes. Um, so I've looked at the grapes and I thought, well, <laughs> what colours are there? <laughs> I think I could start it with maybe blue because there's, there's sort of a blue tint on the skin of the grapes. So I thought, I'll put some ultramarine blue out on my palette. Just a little bit, and uh, up there, and then I, I, I can see reds. I can see reds in there, so red, <laughs> lizard and crimson. Put that out as well. Um, the stem, burnt sienna. This, uh, oh, you can't even. <laughs> Oh dear, I was just pouring my paint on the here, look. Just put a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. Sorry, you missed that. It wasn't really uh, <laughs> camera worthy, but I can try and show everything that I'm doing, really. Because it's better. It's better that way to see what's going on. So I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in the corner there. We only need a little bit. It's just for the... Uh, the sticky bit and to make it dark I'm gonna put some black in there I think that's a good idea <laughs> might not be though so I've got some black some black so I've got red ultramarine blue alizarin crimson there's a little bit of burnt sienna there and some black and I think I'm that's all I'm going to need. Uh, I don't know if I need anything else. So, I'll move my palette out of the way. 
and I'll use this pencil. This is a cheapo pencil. It's a 5H. A 5H. Uh, that just means it's hard. Because <laughs> the, the softer pencils smudge more. So what I'm going to do, looking down, looking down at the paper, looking down at the grapes. I'm going to have a go at doing a couple of grapes. I'm not worried about it not being exact, to be honest. I just want to make it look like two real looking grapes that's it's like a, it's a realism challenge i guess since that's what mark mr Crowley, mr mark Crowley's done realism so this will be a realism challenge for me and uh i like realism i i'm one of these people that likes a lot of styles of art uh, some people don't like realism they're like oh no you shouldn't be painting and realism because painting it should look like a painting and even realistic paintings when you stand far away they look realistic but when you get close they look like a painting anyway so i don't i don't really get it to be honest Although, uh, <laughs> saying that, I have seen paintings that look <laughs> like photos even close up, uh, and I've got to admit, I'm not sure if I understand the reason for that. I suppose uh, it's a good selling point, I guess, if you selling paintings you can sell yourself as a an artist that can paint something that looks like a photo da, da, da. like a magician I think painters they're like magicians i always wanted to be a wizard so this is the closest i can get <laughs> Only Hogwarts would come and fetch me. I'd be happy there. <laughs> so I'm just going to draw in the shadows as well. I noticed in the book, uh, Mark Crowley, we'll call him MC, <laughs> so I don't keep saying his name. M MC Mark Crowley. Yeah, I noticed that he always puts his shadow in last. I don't know why, there must be a reason. There's like a double shadow on this. It's like a shadow here. And then there's a shadow there. I have to make sure I keep myself um, looking down, otherwise I'll be in trouble. If I look at an angle, something I used to do, uh, one of my big mistakes as a uh, someone who used to draw is I never sat at the angle you needed to be to look at your picture. What I mean is I would look at it at, from an angle, so I'd be drawing it at that angle and then it would just all mess up because <laughs> it would be all drawn at the angle and then when you look at it flat, it's wrong. Bad Jason. Bad Jason. Okay, so I just dipped my brush into a tiny bit of water and then I'm going to build this up and uh, if it works, awesome. <laughs> but if it doesn't, yeah, we're going to do, to do it again, I suppose. So I think I'm going to start with this blue. This blue. Ultramarine blue with some water, a watercolour. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to look down at the uh, grape and I'm going to put this in. I'm just going to fill it in really. Fill the grape in. You see, the thing I like about watercolour 
because it just feels so smooth. <laughs> it does. It feels smooth. It's so soft and quiet and watercolors. Makes oil painting seem a little bit um, brutal. It is quite hard though, watercolor, because you got to think the other way around. You think in in light to dark rather than the other way around, dark to light. That makes sense. <laughs> Mm, this grape is looking a little bit more um, bulbous <laughs> than that grape. Mm, this grape around there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna th thinking, get a bit more water. What I might do as well, I'll use some paper towel to. Uh, Dry my brush. Uh, I think that's a good idea. So I just edited out me coughing my guts up. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting a little bit of this burnt sienna on the brush. Actually, I'll probably use a smaller brush. Light in the water. Let's use a smaller brush. Grabbing some burnt sienna. So, no, I might get a bit of blue in it because it sort of grays it then. And what we want to do is paint this twiggy thing so we can. There we go. Okay. wrong with mine? Why doesn't mine look as good as that? Why doesn't my painting look as good as real life? <laughs> mm. I know why. Because it's a painting. And I'm a mere amateur. <laughs> so, I've got a little bit of burnt umber over here. These are all the colours I was using when I was doing a portrait. And there's a little bit of burnt umber there. So I'm going to steal it. I'm going to steal the burnt umber and we're going to use it here. Oh yeah, it's nice and dark. The thing I've noticed, uh, you probably noticed or you will notice if you start watercolour is when you're looking at like the um, does that sound harsh because <laughs> uh, I'm a beginner we're all beginners at one stage but but saying when when I look at beginner watercolours like I said I'm a beginner <laughs> um, but I notice that they tend to be very flat looking and they're very like uh, lacking contrast and <laughs> mine were like that and that's one of the reasons I did quit watercolour because <laughs> I just didn't get it my, I didn't get why my paintings look so rubbish <laughs> and it was because I wasn't darkening things enough I was uh, doing everything so light and wishy-washy. <laughs> wishy-washy. <laughs> yeah, they were just too light and didn't didn't work. So I'm going to grab some of this black. Black. In with this red. A bit more black. Maybe I've gone too dark now. Hmm. Black and red, black and red, just black and red. And I think 
We might have to do this in more than one wash. So what I'm going to try and do is make it really dark. So looking at it, areas that I want to keep So I'm going to go quite dark here, quite dark, I notice there's a light spot. And there's sort of a light area around it, annoyingly, <laughs> that I noticed as I was painting. So I might have to come in with a... Uh, pencil or something, just to lighten that up. There's something that MC does. <laughs> I'm just grabbing a bit more red in my black. A bit more red in my black. Oh. So, <laughs> just dropping my palette everywhere. A bit more red in it. Yeah, that's better. And then the spit as well. So I'm going to uh, just build my colour up. Build it up more and more. Makes you wonder if you should just uh, throw in the dark and then use colouring pencils afterwards. But I think that blue's darker than what I've got anyway. So I'll wash my brush, wipe it on the paper towel, and then I'm going to get some of this blue. I think what I'll do is I'll create a purpley colour here. So a bit of blue, purple, purple to the blue side is okay. And then what I'm going to do without dropping that again. I'm going to start using that. I think that looks a bit better. down a bit. It's a bit of blue and a bit of black in it as well. It's a bit better. Alright, we really need to go a lot darker. This is what I was saying. This, is, this bit I would struggle with because I'd be telling myself I've done enough, <laughs> but I can see it's just not dark enough. It really needs to be much darker. So I need to darken. Thing is, I do enjoy doing these. Even though uh, I'm, I, I, like I said, I'm a beginner. Watercolors, so I do find them difficult. When it comes to uh, water mixable oils, I 
feel like a superhero. <laughs> Because I'm so used to those paints that uh, even though I don't do amazing paintings, I always feel like I can do a painting. But I've always said my uh, my goal is for the channel anyway is to help people learn to paint, and then they can do their own. Because that way, <laughs> I could do some good ones. Use the techniques I do and then do it better. I've seen some amazing pictures done by other people. And they've said that they've learnt by watching me. and. <laughs> I look at the pictures and I'm like, wow, amazing. But they learnt from watching me. And they do some unbelievable pieces. And uh, it's good. It's good to see. It's good to see people develop their work as well. It's good to see uh, me developing, <laughs> developing as a painter. I'm in, in the same, I'm doing the same battling, doing painting after painting, trying to get better and better and better, trying to improve, doing art challenges, entering competitions, just keep battling. <laughs> That's what I kind of see it like, it's like a battle. You've got to battle it. And don't listen to people that say, oh no, you, you, you'll never make it as an artist. Because what do they know? You have to believe in yourself really. So these two grapes are coming on. They're starting to look more like grapes. <laughs> I still need to charge more colour in. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it. To charge more colour in. See, I like this, where you can put a wet brush and it sort of scrapes away the paint. And then I can come back with a, like a dark, a nice dark, really dark. You have to wait for this to dry, I think. Yeah, we'll leave that bit to dry. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work for me. Not the way I want. Sometimes this happens and uh, I just get a little bit of water on my brush and just let it bleed out because it's I don't really want hard edges on the inside of the grape and that's not the way I want it. Right, what I'm thinking now is it'd be good if I started doing the uh, shadow colour. Now the shadow does have this is something I was playing with, is like doing different colours in the shadow. I won't go too mental. Because <laughs> I want to try and do something half decent at least. So I put a bit of red in the black, that's all. Just a touch of red. And the shadow comes in about there, doesn't it? So another uh, problem I had with, this is actually not just watercolour, this is normal. Normal everything, art. It, it was shadows, my shadows were light. <laughs> they were too light in tone. I wasn't doing them dark enough. 
and then it was making uh, whatever I draw not look not look heavy enough. It needs to it needs to be heavy, doesn't it? it? Needs to be heavy. It needs to be real and solid. It needs to give that effect at least. And uh, that was one of my issues. I wasn't. I don't know why I wasn't doing it. But I admit I wasn't. Maybe I was uh, thinking of the shadows as a secondary thing or something. I don't know. Because they are very important. So we're going lighter now. This is the second, <laughs> talking about secondary shadows. This actually is a secondary shadow. I've got more than one light on me, that's why it's creating more than one shadow. And there we go. Mm, yeah, I'm quite, quite liking this actually. Hope the angles are about right. It's sort of really faint. Just wipe my brush. There's a really faint shadow. It goes there. Oh, we already kind of did it. And there's a secondary shadow of that grape as well. Let's just do this. And do it. Yeah. How's that looking? How's that look on camera? It's not too bad. Just going to use a wet brush to go around the edge. Just to soften it a bit. Going to grab a little bit of this red. Show you. A little bit of this red and blue to make this sort of lavender-y colour. And I want to put that in that shadow there. And it in there as well. That shadow actually comes across there. Yeah, I'll be all right. So I'm going to go into some more of this dark, it's a darker color. <coughs> blue and red, blue and red. Dark, make this p -p 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 <laughs> purple. So I'm going darker still now. You see. Always going a bit darker. Looking at the grape, looking at my picture, trying to uh, make it look similar, <laughs> best I can anyway. Best I can now, best I can now. After I've done this, I'll be a bit better of a painter. That's what I like to think, like, every uh, every painting I do, I get a little bit better and better. I don't know about this. 
grape is, I'm not sure, oh, this grape's looking quite nice, but this one it's sort of, I don't know. over it. It might help it. It's not looking... It's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. I'm just going to get a little bit of this brown colour. I'm going to... Uh, some of these bits. Okay. We got some uh, blue and black. Blue and black. I'm going to more blobs of colour in here and there let them kind of melt out into the water I might use my pencil just to uh, shape in this. Just go over it. And the light a bit as well. Lighten that area on the grape. So I'll grab. I've got this. This is my uh, white pen, and I also want to use a white pencil crayon. <laughs> um, but I need to find it. <laughs> I have dropped it. And. Here one is, anyway. It's in the one I was after, but this will do. It's a white Derwent Graf... Grafinitin... <laughs> Grafitint. Grafitint? White. Uh, I don't know. I think that's dry. And I'm going to uh, use that to just lighten this bit of the grape here. because it's a bit lighter on there. And then I can go over these little bits as well. Just smoothing it out a bit. And this bit here, well that's not quite ready. And then the uh, I want to get a white spot on it, on the grape here, so we'll use the uh, pen, because that's where the light's sort of brightest. I want to um, do this grape as well, as it's...
Might use a little bit of this white in this. Just to soften that shadow. Does work well for softening, softening shadow. And if this is ready yet. It's like wake, waiting for a cake to bake. <laughs> okay, and then I'll put a little uh, white bit on it as well. Okay, <laughs> well there's my go at a couple of grapes anyway, yeah. and like I said, I'm still ratsing, and uh, hopefully I'll get better and better. But I think this shows that using contrast, like I did, went quite dark and darker and darker, helps with your watercolours. Uh, I'm going to do some more watercolour paintings. I'll, I'll have a crack at some landscapes maybe and uh, just to see what I can create using them and then hopefully you'll watch the video and be inspired and do something better. So thanks very much for watching this and I'll see you in another episode. Cheers, bye.